Reverend Dr. Fatty Diab. Reverend Diab is the rector of St. Andrew and St. Peter's Anglican Episcopal Parishes in Ramallah and Birzeit, and chaplain to the five Episcopal institutions in both cities. He is one of Kairos Palestine's authors and continues to serve on its board. Please, let's welcome Reverend Dr. Fadi Diab. Good morning. It is uh, a great honor to be with you at this uh, important event. Uh, much appreciation to the organizers of this conference. Uh, I would like to just point to two uh, things before, um, or three actually. Uh, first, I would like to uh, let uh, you know that my name is Fadi Diab. And for those who are interested in learning some Arabic uh, words, Fadi uh, is a redeemer in English. So that is uh, a name that I am proud of. I am an Episcopal priest in the Diocese of Jerusalem and the Middle East, and I serve two uh, parishes, Ramallah and Birzeit. The second note, uh, I would like to thank Shireen Awad uh, for, his, for her contribution um, this morning about Shireen Abu Akli, um, uh, an event that has uh, touched the uh, souls of every uh, Palestinian uh, but also of every uh, journalist uh, and uh, activist around the world. So thank you, uh, Shireen. Uh, as for the question of uh, naming something to uh, give thanks to God for, I would choose to give thanks for being created in the image and likeness of God. And that is the topic of my presentation. Well, uh, my contribution this morning uh, involves the topic, the image of God in the neighbor. My presentation comprises uh, three parts. The image of God, created in the image of God and the image of God in mission, that is, towards the neighbor. In the book of Genesis, we read, then God said, let us make humans in our own image according to our likeness. Well, that prompts the question, what is the image of God? Let us make humans in our image according to our likeness. So immediately, a question comes to our minds, what is the image of God? What is God's likeness? The second so God created humans in his image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them, which prompts the question, what does it mean to be created in the image of God? And what that entails? Understanding and reclaiming the image of God redirects our understanding of the image of humanity. What does it mean to be created in the image of God? It also shapes human mission toward God 
and each other. What is the context of uh, these two verses in the book of Genesis? Well, the concept of image and likeness are related to worship. The writer of Genesis is concerned about his community in exile living among image-worshipping people. The writer wants to subvert lifeless, motionless images, a human-made idols, with a relational, living, loving, moving, and acting deity. The concept of the image of God is at the heart of human existence and action. Throughout this presentation, I maintain that to be created in the image and likeness of God is to be relational. To interbe and to interact with all those who, are, who share God's likeness and to protect interconnectedness. Learning about the image of God, what does God look like, corresponds with what should humans look like. And of course, with how human beings created in the image of God, should conduct themselves. So what does God look like? Scriptures depicts a, lot, a God who is relational, one who wishes to be in relation with the other, and the other here being his creation. God created the other to form a relationship. God reaches out for others. He wishes to partner with the other. God wishes to involve God's self in a human relationship. God is a companion. He is a movement God who not only resides with his people, but also moves with them. A theological understanding of the relational existence of humankind is offered by Dietrich Bonhoeffer and refined by Karl Barth. Responding to discontent in Germany, at a time of confusion, anxiety, and hopelessness, Von Hoover argues that human existence as male and female is relational. And that existence in the form of relationships may be described as reflecting God's image. In his famous book, Creation and Fall, Bonhoeffer gave a mego day sociality. Sociality as its central meaning. He attached freedom to relationality. Freedom is not equality, ability, capacity, attribute, or position, he argues, but a relationship. Being free means being free for the other. Being free means being free for the others. And this is where some uh, theologians, uh, whether Jewish or Christian, uh, like Mark um, uh, Ellis, who said the, is the, the Jews cannot be free without the freedom of the Palestinians. And this is... Um, uh, the South African uh, theologian uh, and leader said uh, the uh, liberation of South Africa cannot be complete without the liberation of the Palestinian people. And this is where 
it comes. It comes from the understanding that being free means being free for the other. According to Bonhoeffer, it is freedom for the other that constitutes the way in which humans on earth like God in heaven. This understanding means that humans are placed in relationship, free to act for the other. Theodore Jennings Jr. notes that the Imago Dei element of theological anthropology has been mistakenly interpreted as separating human beings from other life forms. Jennings writes, some may seek in the genome the basis for rationality or linguistic, linguistic ability or consciousness or free will or what have you. All qualities that have at some point been offered as candidates for the content of the image of God. Reflecting on the work of Gregory of Nyssa, who, by the way, rejects the notion that the divine is to be identified with unilateral power or domination, and so sees in corporate responsibility the concrete sign of his image, Jennings argues that Gregory realizes that it is precisely as relational creature that the human is called to be the image of God. A category which relates us to all species as that in which the divine image is to be discerned. Well, relationality is not new in our Christian faith. Christians believe in a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. God in God's self is relational. Daniel Migliori argues that the eternal life of God is personal life in relationship. In God's, or it, in God's own eternal being, asserts Migliori, there is movement, life, personal relationships, and the giving and receiving of love. God exists, exists in community. Confessing the triune God radically calls in question all totalitarianism that deny the freedom and rights of all people and resist all individualism that subverts the common welfare. The life of God is essentially self-giving love. It is this compassionate journey of God into a far country of human brokenness and misery asserts Migliori, that prompts the revolution in the understanding of God. Trinity is revealed in God's liberating love in the cross of Christ. It is this eternal source of energy, of human friendship, compassion, sacrificial love, and inclusive community. A theology of a dwelling, a tent, a tent dwelling God reminds us of a God who resides in a mobile tent and who accompanies his people through different times and places. The image of a tent dwelling God reminds us of a God who accompanies his people through different times and places. God is a movement God. 
The Bible shows a God who wanders among people and dwells with them where they dwell. A journeying God is involved in a day-to-day -day activities. A tent-dwelling God is a movement God who nevertheless occupies a specific place. Well, the name of this conference, Christ, as, uh, Christ at the Checkpoint. Our understanding of a relational God prompts us to perceive God moving with people through checkpoints. To perceive God lining up with them. Suffering with them. Waiting with them. Being humiliated with them. God waits with workers in line to go to their works, jobs, and to come home. He endures humiliation and delay, opens doors, confronts restrictions, and provides opportunity. A journeying image of God meets the immovable, bringing their pathos into God's moving ethos. The image and likeness of God represent God as a relational God. Not a transcendent God only, but God who interbe and interact with the other and who calls us to be and act likewise. So, this is uh, part one. What does like look like? He is a relational God who interacts, who interbe and interacts with his creation. So if God's image is relational, then being created in the image of God involves human relationality. Eliminating human sociality and relationality involves distorting the image of God in humanity. The image of God provokes gratitude rather than supremacy or domination. It helps shift human understanding from individualism toward a culture where all humans are cherished and protected. To recognize the image of God in the other demands caring about the wholeness of the universe and treating people as we want to be treated. Relational consciousness offers hope for humankind. When relationships exist, they bring hope for the world. When relationships are in line with what God intends for the world, they break down divisions and separations. The Imago Dei connects humans with God, with each other, and with those left behind. In the Imago Dei, Racism, sexism, and intolerance are transformed into equality, neighborliness, and the common good. In a capitalistic uh, colonial and new colonial systems, self is all important. Ego is all important. These systems define people as isolated individuals or isolated communities or even isolated countries, making private decisions without accountability to one another. In a society oriented towards self-sufficiency, community and connection may be hard to achieve. Humanity needs to recapture its communal, relational nature. When we do that, 
we reclaim our identity as being created in the image of God. We come to the third and last parts. If God's image and likeness means God being in relation with the other, and if being created in the image of God means relating and reaching out to others, what is our mission as being created in the image of God? So the third part is the image of God in mission. And this is where I would like to connect the topic together, the image of God in the neighbor. The image of God in mission towards a neighbor. If the image of God and likeness, if the image and likeness of God is relational, and if being created in the image of God denotes interconnectedness, then what is the mission of the image of God? This is, I think, one of the most important questions that theologians today need to tackle as our world goes into strifes and divisions. A relational mission of the image of God involves reaching out to others and connecting with those especially those whose image has been distorted by human power and wish to domination. It means interbeing with the afflicted and advocating their sacredness. This is the vision and mission of those who are created in the image of God, who march with people seeking restoration of rights and redress of injustice, advocating the right to decent and dignified life depends on understanding humanity as the image of God and as participants in God's creation, helping others achieve decent and dignified life consists of helping them become who they are intended to be, creative and relational human beings. Reflecting on the image of God, Susan Thistlewaite asserts, what makes us not only people, but human beings with dignity and transcendent worth is our capacity to work creatively in the world. When a society exploits, or when a country exploits, or when a colonial system exploits our contribution to the whole and refuses to recognize the moral obligation, obligation we have to one another to ensure decent life conditions, a living wage, and the means of support and the means to support our families. It violates our human dignity and denies the reality of the image of God. A relational understanding of the image of God involves the act of leaving one's comfort zone where control is assured. Control obstructs our vision of God, ourselves and others. It masks human finite creatureliness and lures humanity away from dependence on God. To control, to dominate human relationality is to oppose God's will and to misunderstand his being. A relational experience permits us to see the social order anew and to influence today's world. Relationality is an opportunity to change and to be changed. Relationality is about building relationships 
rather than accomplishing tasks. A relational mission is concerned with the people involved in a particular task and the manner in which their joint action is carried out. A relational mission, missional, a relational mission of the image of God goes beyond the demands of a particular individual, community, or country. It requires willingness and audacity. It demands leaving a comfort zone and being exposed to risk. It requires sacrifice of time as well as space. What does it mean to go there? Asks Hala Gorani, CNN International London based anchor and correspondent. What does it mean to go there? She answers her own question. It does not mean reading about it. It means packing a bag and going there and talking to the people, talking to activists in street, activists risking their lives for speaking to a Western journalist, talking to people on the margins of the story about how they are affected by the decisions of those much more powerful than them. That is why I go there to get the story firsthand. A relational mission of the image of God avoids control, a strategy espoused by dominating systems. Relinquishing control is necessary to deepening our understanding of God, self, and life. The knowledge that one is not in control recognizes brokenness, interconnectedness in oneself and others. A relational mission of the image of God challenges superiority, exclusivism, sexism, and domination. It subverts supremacy, particularity, and fundamentalism. Instead, it offers critical resources that could and should be used to protect, respect, and enhance the flourishing of a human life in mutual coexistence and moral responsibility. Humanity is created for a purpose, to participate in a special set of dynamic relations between God, humanity, and creation toward fellowship, stewardship, and greater justice and mercy. A relational mission of the image of God is committed to diversity. It embraces pluralism, incorporating and collaborating with other faith traditions for the well-being of God's beloved community and creation. When traditions by the way, traditions now are fighting. When traditions see different others as partners, then exceptionalism, superior, superiority, and racism are transformed into appreciation of differences and acceptance of commonalities. When people start to recognize the image of God in different others and recognize the spirit creatively working in every tradition and in creation, their eyes are open to new realities. In the context of Israel-Palestine, controlling human relationality, sociality, and interconnectedness goes against the image of God. Separation of oneself from others, isolating peoples, Looking communities into ghettos goes against God's dream for God's world. Controlling movement, restricting connectedness, limiting opportunity denotes eradicating human relationality and negating God's image. 
domination, colonization, and occupation distort not only human sociality, but also God's own image. The image of God in the neighbor calls upon humans to build relationships, not walls. Construct partnerships, not divisions. To conclude, I hope I did not uh, exceed uh, my limit. To conclude, I have argued that the image of God calls upon us to reach out to those whose image has been threatened, distorted, and killed by human ideology, power, and domination. The parable of the Good Samaritan depicts Jesus' understanding of a humanity being created in the image of God. The parable was told in response to the question, Who is my neighbor? The Samaritan was not des designated as neighbor because he was a Samaritan. He was a neighbor because he reached out, risked his own security and resources for a victim, one who was not only stripped, beaten, and left half dead, but also denied relationality, sociality, and interconnectedness by those who passed by on the other side of the road. The, par the parable brings together the meaning of the image of God and the mission of a humanity being created in the image of God. We are called to be transporters of God's image. We are called to be moved with compassion, to reach out, to bandage the wants. Being created in the image of God is to be commissioned to show mercy. We are called to go and do likewise. Thank you.